So, Judah, thanks so much for your time. It's a pleasure talking to you today. Of course, happy to be here. And so, I mean, the movie has officially come out. What are your plans for tonight? Are you going to watch it with friends and family? Yes, yeah, I, gotta, I have a little viewing party planned, uh, a socially distanced viewing party for right now. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, no, it's always fun when, uh, when I get to share what I did with, uh, with everybody. So um, yeah, that's, that's kind of the best part of it. Right. And you know what? I had so much fun watching it. I felt like it was, it was like, you know, there's a line in the movie that says, you know, the Terminator 2 is only one of a few sequels that are better than the first <laughs> one. I feel like that, that, that Killer Queen is the fifth one. Is it for you as well? Oh, wow. Well, thank you for saying that, for one. <laughs> um, oh, man, that's tough. I do really like the sequel, to be fair. I really do. Um, you know, this was like one of the first chances I've gotten as an actor to go back and revisit a character I've played. Um, and this, this material specifically, this character specifically, is just something that is so close to my heart that I love so much and connect with so much. And so to be able to kind of bring it back to life and, and explore where Cole is in his life now and what's happening um, and how all these demons come back to haunt him <laughs> was just such a blast, such an absolute blast. You know, I love about this sequel that Yes, we get to see the horror elements and the comedy elements, but in its core, it's also a story about a teenager that, that is still suffering from the events that happened, and he's also facing the deal that no one believes him. So yeah. would you say that's one of the aspects that made you be, you know, feel interested about this one? Oh, completely. Yeah, you know, the thing that I think is really, really interesting about this film is, you know, not only do we see Cole struggling to make it through high school and dealing just with the normal anxiety and social awkwardness and bullies and, and, and everything that uh, comes with that. But then on top of that, he's dealing with this trauma that he went through and the fact that nobody believes him and they, they literally think that he's insane. Um, and in turn, that kind of makes him have to start to doubt his own sanity and wonder if he is just seeing things. Um, and there's this really interesting kind of through line of that throughout the entire film, um, which, which I think just adds an entirely new layer to the story. Right, absolutely. And at the beginning of the, the movie, we get to see that Cole is having, you know, a hard time going through high school. Yeah. Um, and I, I, Robbie O'Mell actually told me on Monday that he's not very unhappy that high school is over. So how is it for you? Are you happy it's over or, or do you miss I that? am very happy high school is over. I think, I think most people would agree that they're happy when high school <laughs> is over. <laughs> so yeah, no, it's not exactly the best time. <laughs> um, but but I think you know there's there's so many pieces of myself in this role and in this film and, and and that's absolutely part of it you know you get to kind of imbue all these personal experiences and things you actually went through and use them and as you know jumping off places for what your character is going through. Right. And were you ever a DTF in high school? A what? A DTF. What does that mean? Ditching Thursday Fridays. <laughs> does that mean down? Wait, down to. What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's the other one, yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I, uh, I may have ditched what once or twice on a Thursday or Friday. Um, I, can, I, can, I can neither confirm nor deny that. Um. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, what, what I love is that, that, um, that every once in a while we get to hear, you know, like lines that may, may, make you actually thing you know like the one at the beginning of the movie where Cole goes like I'm um, getting what you want without actually working for it is ultimately unrewarding so Sony, mm -hmm. how, how do you feel about that do you think that that counts for acting as well that counts as well I'm sorry can you repeat that so for acting do you believe it, it counts for acting as well oh yeah oh I think I think those moments are some of the most important moments in the film and a part of why I love these films so much is it, it, it does mix all these different genres together. You know, you have horror directly followed by comedy, directly followed by drama, you know, you have romance in this one, but at its heart, it's, it's a very heartfelt film. And I think it comes through in moments like that, of, in moments of just complete sincerity, you know? Mm -hmm. Yes, and one of these moments was when, when Phoebe and Cole are actually talking about uh, childhood dreams. So mm -hmm. as as did you, you know, was it always acting for you? Or did you have another childhood dream that you were following first? 
Oh, um, I mean, my, my year, this is me following my childhood dream right now. <laughs> Me being in this film, really. I mean, um, and I, I, I still to this day have, uh, have a hard time believing that, you know, it's coming through. But um, here I am. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I, I asked Robbie and uh, um, which one would have been the coolest to babysit, you, Emily or Jenna? And now I'm going to ask you which one would have been the coolest babysitter for you, Hannah Mae, Bella, Andrew or Robbie? Oh, I can't get them all? Oh. <laughs> no, you have to pick one. <laughs> um, you know, I do really love uh, Cole and Robbie's character's connection in the film. I think that's one of my favorite pieces of the story, you know, because they have kind of this unique oddball relationship that somehow goes way beyond the fact that, you know, Max is just trying to kill Cole. There's also this weird, like, kind of father-son bond going on where he's also imbuing him with all these life lessons. And it's, it's this very kind of funny uh, relationship that, that really comes through in the second film, definitely. Right, absolutely. I love that relationship as well. You know, just, just you know, the one in the first one with the ex, that alone was yes. just you know, like <laughs> a pure highlight then. <laughs> one of my favorite, favorite scenes from the first film. Yeah, and, and I think definitely. like you just got to build so much on that with the second one. We got to do so many more things, you know, in that exact same vein. Yeah, and, and uh, the great thing about you is that you started off, you know, with acting very early in your life. And uh, many people say when you want to learn something, you should try it, to learn it as soon as possible when you are a kid, you know, like music, playing guitar sure, or, yeah. or a language. Um, would you say that, that, that that's the same with acting? Do you feel like it's an advantage to start off very early in life? Um, sometimes. I think it depends because, you know, the, the funny thing with acting is sometimes um, if you start really early and you do it a ton, you get in your own head about it you know, and you get to a point where you really are acting all the time. And, you know, my biggest thing um, when I am acting is to try to not act, you know, it's to try to just let everything go and just be, you know, present in the moment and exist as that character and think as they would, um, because I think that's when you get the most truthful performances. Right. And, and when it comes down to, to horror, there are so many people like to be scared. And mm -hmm. I remember when, when we spoke to Jamie Lee Curtis about Halloween and she said she appreciates that, that, you know, people feel scared when watching horror movies, but she doesn't understand it. So she's like, making horror films is more fun for her than actually watching them. Mm -hmm. So I, I, what, do you think, what, do you, what do you think why people like to be scared? What do I think? If why I, people like to be scared? Yes, yes. Oh, it's an adrenaline rush. It's so fun. <laughs> right? I mean, I think it's that thing where your heart st starts beating and you're like, oh man, you know, it's, it's like the same, pe the same reason why people like roller coasters. Uh, <laughs> I think it's, it's a very similar concept. Um, it's really funny though, because, you know, I was somebody who definitely used to be scared of horror movies. Uh, like I, I was, really? one of those people, you know, I would jump for sure. Yes, I was, I was a major jumper. But it's funny because, you know, now I've made a couple of them and it's way harder to be scared by them because you're watching it the entire time. Like, oh yeah, I know how they're doing that. I know this and that. Oh, I, I can imagine how they film that or what the prosthetic looked like or the fake blood or like, so it, it has the one thing, the one negative I can say about this babysitter franchise is it may have ruin the, the jump scares in horror movies for me a bit. <laughs> <laughs> and would you say, you know, it changed uh, the overall how you look at movies because you always see more than actually other people see? Absolutely. Yeah, you read into them in an entirely different way, you know. Um, and, you know, I'm somebody too, I, I aspire to be a director, you know. Um, and, and so much of it is like you, you, you're watching a film and you're, you know, uh, thinking about all the shot composition and all the lighting and, and all the different performances and, and how they're orchestrating all those different parts. Um, and uh, it's funny because I, I have to remind myself sometimes when I'm watching a movie, like, no, just let it go, just enjoy it, just immerse in it. Because you do kind of get in your own head and you start just analyzing it, you know? Awesome. And my last question to you would be, um, we also get to see you in uh, The Christmas Chronicles too very soon. Mm -hmm. And I remember that people were incredibly excited when Goldie Hawn appeared at the end of the first film. So I was wondering how much can we expect of her this time? Um, 
I think I think you could, I think people who were uh, enjoyed her in the first one will be very happy with this second film. Let's just say that. <laughs> awesome, Judah. Mm-hmm. Thanks so much for your time today, and have fun watching your movie tonight. Thank you. I appreciate it. This was super super fun. It was nice talking to you. Nice talking to you. Thanks so much, Judah. All right. Bye bye. Have a good time. Bye.